Hey guys, welcome back to KC Timeshare. My name is KC, and this is a platform where I share my watch collecting journey with you. I have had this Black Bay 58 for more than two years now. This is probably my favorite and most worn watch in my collection. I have a lot of good things to say about the Black Bay 58, but there is no such thing as a perfect watch. So I wanted to highlight some detail which might not be so obvious to everyone. Hopefully, watching this video would make you a more informed buyer and help you to decide if the Black Bay 58 is right for you. Let's start with the dial. There is one detail that I noticed which makes me wonder if Tudor did it intentionally or not. If you look closely at the water resistance description, you will notice there is a space between the letter M and the colon, but there isn't a space between the colon and the 6. I found that a bit weird and personally would prefer a space between the colon and the sex to make it a bit more consistent. Next is the hands and the hour markers. Both the hands and the markers are coated with the same material, but I noticed the hands reflect light more than the markers. It is a bit difficult to capture it on camera, but when the light hits the dial, a lot of the time I can only see the reflection from the hands and the hour markers just kind of disappeared. Speaking of markers, I have made a video about a common Tudor dial quality control issue which has been confirmed by the Rolex Service Center. I'll leave a link to the video on the top right hand side of your screen and in the description box down below if you are interested. Now, let's take a look at the claps, which is perhaps the bit that I dislike the most about the Black Bay 58. I personally find this pull open mechanism a bit difficult to use. Perhaps I have been spoiled by the Rolex claps, which gives much better feedback than the Tudor. I often find myself pulling from the side of the claps instead, because it is much easier to open the claps this way. The other thing I wanted to mention is that there is no on-the-fly easy adjustment on this Black Bay 58. Tudor currently only offers on-the-fly adjustment on the bronze version in the Black Bay 58 lineup. I know a lot of us have been hoping Tudor to upgrade the current Black Bay 58 claps with the T-Fit system found on the Bronze Bay 58. I personally don't see that happening. If Tudor were to offer the T-Fit system on the steel Black Bay 58, I think they would have to launch a new Black Bay 58 altogether instead. The Black Bay 58 is mainly designed to cater for people with smaller wrists. I have a 6 inch wrist and I think the Black Bay 58 fits really well on me. For those who have smaller wrists like myself, I wanted to make you aware of an issue on the claps. And that is the fact that the lug to lug of the claps is actually longer than the main case. Notice the lug to lug of the front measures at 47mm. However, the lug to lug at the claps measures at 53mm. And that is 6mm longer than the watch head. It means that if the Black Bay 58 suits you just right from a top-down view, the claps would definitely be too long for you. Notice here the bracelet doesn't fall straight down from the lugs. The long lug to lug is driven by two fetters. First is this fixed link, which cannot be rotated further than this angle. The other fetter is this long folding mechanism. Together, they make the lug to lug of the claps longer than what I would normally like to see. By the way, if you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. It will mean a lot to me and will also help the channel grow. A lot of reviewers call the Black Bay 58 a strap monster. I think the Black Bay 58 looks great only on metal bracelet or NATO strap, but I don't think the watch is friendly for those who are into leather straps. This is because the lug holes are located at the very edge of the lugs. When you fit a leather strap on, it will leave quite a big gap between the watch head and the strap. It is something that I personally don't like, and also a reason why I never put my Black Bay 58 on a leather strap. I will have no problem to put my Black Bay 58 on a NATO though, because the gap will be filled by the fabric. Since we are on the topic of bracelet, Let's talk about the rivets. This is something that has been discussed extensively by all watch reviewers, 
and I'm sure you know all about it already. But before you write off the Black Bay 58 completely because of the rivers, I do want to say that when the watch is on the wrist and during day-to-day -day use, I didn't notice the rivers at all. It is only really noticeable when you specifically look for it, or when the watch is being looked at directly from the side. I'm personally not bothered by it at all. What bothers me though is the way how the bracelet tapers. The bracelet has a step style tapering which I don't really like. Notice how the Rolex bracelet tapers smoothly from the lugs all the way down to the clasps, and it looks much more refined. It makes the Tudor taper looks like an afterthought. Finally, I wanted to talk about the bezel. The Black Bay 58 is a dive watch after all, and the bezel is one of the most important features of the watch. Just like the clubs, I must admit that the bezel is also difficult to operate. The coin edge doesn't really give the bezel enough grip and makes it difficult to use. The difference is night and day compared to the Rolex Submariner. Instead of gripping it from the edge, I often find myself having to press down from the top in order to rotate the bezel. I just wish Tudor can make the edge a bit more pronounced to make it easier to use. I really like the Black Bay 58's lineup, and therefore it has been very difficult for me to come up with this list. But I do want to flag any potential negative points to you, so that you know exactly what you are getting when you put your hard-earned money into this luxury purchase. I hope you find this video helpful, and please let me know what you think about the Black Bay 58 in the comment section down below.